This was used before uh, July of 2007. And the latest song is on UCB 600. This was issued in July last year. That's actually one of the advantages of working in this domain. Is that the domain knowledge is, is it's well, there. Published. Well, right. well published? Well, yeah. I'm, what I'm kind of asking is that you're taking this domain knowledge and putting it in the mixer and then verifying it against the same domain knowledge. Right. <laughs> no, there are two things. There are two shorts. Yeah, I'm sure. One, I'm one sure thing. there are. I just right, isn't clear. Right. right. <laughs> the thing is, I come from the first thing that I say is contract <laughs> law and certain aspect of ICC in order to come to a model. The optic process model that we, we just saw over there. And in ICC, they specify requirement to. They specify besides obligation, okay. they specify what check need to be do, what uh, evidence okay. need to be issued, and so forth. So you started with the law and then compared it against the checklist. Right. The law, because ICC is also they have certain aspect of law too. Okay. ICC is certain aspect of law besides yeah. the contract law. They have a certain because documentary credit procedure is actually a set of contracts. Mm -hmm. It's a set of contracts. The contract between the buyer and the seller, the buyer and the bank, the seller and the bank, the bank to the bank. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the documentary credit, you will see there are a, a set of uh, yes. contracts. You see, there are seven contracts between In the different appendix parties. again. Right, there's <laughs> different <laughs> contracts between them. Ask another question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you answered the question already. So, so basically your model came out of the law and you're comparing it against the checklist. Yes. Okay. Um, um, no, I think I'm going to keep going here in just a time. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> what is like 15? Uh, how do you know these are the exhaustive set, 1 to 10? Or uh, is there any way to verify that or you do? Um, uh, sure. Now the process, you have me to verify that. Okay. In the process here, before I come to the result, you need to look at the process. And I identify the taxonomies of all of the deontic relationship on the, mm -hmm. the obligation. And you see here uh, there are a set of uh, of relationship in the uh, bilateral contract, sequential contract and so forth. These are exotic. These are exotic. Every kind of contract, even international organization procedure, follow this kind of contract. And I send my again, I send my contract law at ICC and to verify this claim. And, and you can look at that in chapter five. Also, I identify a taxonomy of the ontic chain. The so you went, you went to the contract and find out all these obligations? Yeah, on, yeah, on possible structure, on possible okay. contractual structure. How, how, how you become sure that you didn't miss anyone? Right, completeness, right? Uh, right, the, the, the thing I'm sure here is just uh, based on the area of the main that I mentioned, because everything here is based on a set in the dissertation, you will see the a set of board that I'm looking at. It look the contracting law, it look the ICC, it look the income term, and so forth. These are the set of rules that govern inter organizational transaction, especially so, in business transaction. So, so based on a uh, limited scope still, right? Uh, uh, you can't claim these applicable based on what you examined. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you look at the uh, limitation, you will see it's clearly here. Okay, I'm not going to see the set and order relation. For instance, I'm not looking at an option contract. An option contract. An option contract is a contract that I uh, promise I do not uh, revolt the establishment of a future contract. I mean, you can anytime decide to establish the contract in the future. So that kind of thing relates to what legal theory is on the second order relation, and I not look at that. In this research, this is one of the limitations. I look at the specific here. What I claim here is on an obligation. And if you look at the taxonomy, you will see it's a completely for an obligation. There are no thing more. No, my, my, my point, I understand that. My, I think it's not, nothing negation or nothing negative mm -hmm. about your dissertation. What I've done is excellent. But I'm trying to understand the scope of applicability in this case. Because practice line 15. Yeah. Yeah, 15. yeah, 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 yeah. Because 
this one to ten, you are you're coming up with some obligation. Now, if you go to some lawyer, lawyer may say, no, there, there is another, another 11th obligation mentioned in this contract. How do, how, become, how do you become sure that 11th obligation doesn't exist in that contract? Uh, right. How do, think, yeah. is, there, is, there any, I'm asking, is there any list of obligation that is mentioned in any document that you have captured or you have gone through line by line on the contract and find out, okay, these are the obligations I'm finding in the yeah, contract? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, uh, let me explain. This is a possible structure of obligation. This is all possible structure of application. This is a note like a unilateral contract, like a reward contract. Someone uh, lost uh, a dog or a cow, and they promise that if you return to them, they will give some. No, I'm saying, my question, I understand, but why is it, why you're saying this is the only possible? It may right, if you look, yeah, you look at the analytical purpose, there's nothing more. You see, there are certain components. An obligation held from home to home, an action and a condition. You see? And by on that, by vary the thing, you will see that there is a condition obligation, conditional obligation. There is an absolute obligation and an end. There is an obligation, uh, an absolute obligation and a conditional obligation. There is two conditional obligations. You don't see it two. quite here, but it's kind of like a matrix. And right, this is like a matrix. Okay. So you see, these are combinations are exotic. They are nothing else related to the obligation. So if someone came up with a new type of contract, you could represent it with a deontic pattern. Sure. If it's not like the second order contract. contract or something right. like that. If it's not the yeah. second yeah. order like contract. Commu like a commune or something right. like right. that. Right. You know. right. If it's not about uh, the option contract like I mentioned before, as the, the limitation as the mm -hmm. it's not about like um, the contract is really interesting. But you could extend it to handle options. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But it yeah. isn't here. Yeah. <coughs> and the deontic so chain too. If you look at the deontic chain. Perhaps Koshik is, is more more hinting at the way you've worded it than the actual work underneath it. Right, right, right. Uh, if you look at the deontic chain, you see uh, these are like the, the taxon the rest of it. <laughs> right. like the taxonomies of the deontic chain. That's not what I asked for. There's ten more to come. <laughs> <laughs> back to back to slide fifteen. 